Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today we're going to look at some cassettes that quite a few of you have asked me to look at but I didn't have any. But thanks to a wonderful gentleman called Peter Trappel in the Netherlands. Peter, they were a, quite a quest to get them here but we got there in the end. Thank you so, so much for sending them. We're going to have a look at some JVC. Now, according to VintageCassettes.com JVC only really sold the cassettes in Europe around 1990, 1991. There doesn't seem to be any other entry. There is for the USA and there is for obviously Japan, but not many for Europe. And I've got to be honest, I don't remember really seeing many JVC cassettes at all back in the day. So what we've got here is their entry level, the AF190. Now let's have a look at what it says on the back. Ultra fine, high energy magnetic particles, precisely oriented and coated in extremely high density, blah, blah, blah. Right, okay, good. Yep. Made in Republic of Korea. Okay, so that's the entry level. Now, you'd think going up the range, you've got the UFI 60, which is ultra fidelity, and uh, this is ideal for digital recording. Let's have a see what it says on the back. Ultrafine high energy magnetic particles precise. Hang on, we've read this somewhere before. Yeah, it's got exactly the same blurb on the back as the AF1. So the UF1 and AF1 seem to have the same blurb, only big difference is this one is made in Switzerland. And indeed, if we look at it, you can see those are ICM turbo hubs which is good because I like ICM cassettes so we've got the AF1 and the UF1 you'd think it was you know ferric and super ferric but same blurb meh let's have a look and then we go to the UF290 which again ICM turbo hubs and again ultra fidelity ideal for digital recording so we'll see what this is it ultra super fine chromium dioxide particles Oh, so this is going to be a pure chrome, is it? Uniform in size, reduced... Okay, right, so this is the entry level. There is a UF2S, but uh, I haven't got one of these in this lineup. And besides, you don't want me to do an entire lineup. I mean, you know, I don't want to do six cassettes. We'll be here forever. And then we've got the XF4, which is excellent fidelity. And this is the metal. Let's have a look. Okay, super fine needle shaped metal particles. And this one is made in Japan. So in one range, we've got Korean, Swiss, and Japanese all in one range. So I think we can it's safe to assume that these were all obviously outsourced, except maybe this wasn't. Who knows? Let's have a look at them and uh, see if we can figure out anymore i mean it's a shame to open they look so nice don't they they look so nice and like i said these are the only ones i've got but peter you sent them me to do the video so let's do the video and i'm going to try yet again to fail to open these in any sort of delicate way let's have a look so if we cut down there and uh, we cut down there and then we cut down there right oh there we go now, Tony Cruz, the illustrious owner of Cassette Comeback Canada. Is this the Tony Cruz method for taking cassettes out? Have I finally mastered it there? Because you can, you've got the whole wrapper left. Ah, uh, you, uh, you see, I, I might have got there, Tony. Okay, so, well, what do you know? This one, come on, a small window. Yes, it's a Saihan. And on that note, before we continue, the reason I'm looking at this one, which is the most common JVC cassette in Europe, it's because it's a Saihan, just like this. It's the same shell. I don't know if you can see the A underneath there, but it's the same, it's the same shell. Uh, there's, sorry, there's two versions of this stuff. And there's the Saihan one, and I've looked at those in other videos so I'm not going to go through them again. And there's also a version that looks like it's forward. And I looked at them in the Bush videos. So um, no point in opening this and looking at that. And it's not the 1990 setup anyway. But yeah, that's Saihan. 
This one is Saihan. Let's have a look inside. We've got the stickers, J card, anything. No, it's just the uh, yeah usual stuff. But yeah, okay. Seems decent enough. And if it is just like all the rest of the regular Saihans, then should be a pretty decent tape. So that's the AF1. Right, let's have a look at the UF1. UF1, that was a uh, name of one of my classes I was in at school, Upper Figures 1. Anyway, uh, let's see if I can do this one as delicately as the other one. Score it down there. Score it down there. Score it down there. Not quite as tidily, but there we go. Well, hey. There we go. Tony Cruz method of trying to preserve wrappers. I like it. Okay, so oh look at that. See, I've cut down the side of it. Never mind. So yeah, so we've got ICM hubs on this, but that doesn't look like a classic typical ICM shell to me. It looks more cheaper and BS. So I was kind of hoping it'd be one of the you know the fake MAR type shells that ICM did, but yeah, no, this this could well be an ICM shell. Um, yeah, it's pretty plain. Let's have a swind it on a bit and have a sniff. See if it is a proper chrome. Oh no, this isn't a chrome. <laughs> this is the normal position. Duh. Yeah. So it should be. Yeah. So, right. Notice how, like I said, this one's got a sticker on it. And this one doesn't have a sticker on it. And the shells are different and everything. And yeah the labels are what they are is there any sort of uniformity in the j card yeah the j card's pretty uniform yeah so that is the ufi or uf1 let's have a look at the uf2 now which is another icm no bugger it all right there we go right so again, this seems to be basically the same shell and hubs, the UF2 and the UF1. Uh, this one, let's see if this one's a pure chrome, I should say. <laughs> Very black. Oh yeah, there's definitely a sniff of chrome there. So because it's ICM and they didn't make their own tape, it's probably going to be BASF or AGFA in there. Let's have a look at the... Yeah. And I imagine this will look just the same on the inside. Yeah, pretty much. So even the cases are different because if we look at these ones, which came from ICM, you've got the you know standard straight hub retainer, and then the Saihan one is a, a triple. So the only thing that's pretty consistent between all of these is the J cards are pretty consistent. Everything else is very different. Right, let's have a look at the. XF4 metal. Okay, nice and clean off. Right, so now okay let's, let's have a look so the shell is different there's like that little triangular marking on there which isn't on this it's a slightly different color yeah so the shell's different the hubs the hubs i don't recognize to be honest with you so it could be that maybe this is since it's made in japan and it's got hubs i don't really recognize this could be a genuine jvc make cassette if it's not, please do put in the comments why I'm wrong. But it could well be a genuine JVC cassette. And again, let's have a look in the... Yeah, you see the, the label sheet's different, again, to the other ones. Uh, this one's all tape handling. You see, what's the point of that? I mean, okay, I mean, normally you'd write your J card like this, but you could turn it inside out because I've put this there, but then they've just... Got tips on handling the storage. Full timeline. Oh, okay. So this actually isn't a European version. It looks like it looks like this is the American version of it. So 
So yeah, at this point, they're a bit of a mishmash. Different brands are making them. We've got Saihan, ICM, and possibly JVC. But the proof of the pie is in the eating, so to say. So let's fight up a deck. Let's get some music recorded on these and see if they are actually any good. Okay, so I have the AF1 already biased up in the Revox. I'm going to record this around zero on the Revox, and because this isn't a Dolby Scale deck, that's about plus three Dolby Scale. So I've got a bit of music now. It's a nice little piano y one called Marigold. Let's see how the AF1 performs. Yeah, so it is consistent with Saihan Entry Lab of Ferrix. It's very good. I mean, that was a very delicate piece of music there. No particular strong emphasis in the mids, but it had nice treble. The piano didn't sound warbly. So a low wound flutter there. Um, the bass was there. Yeah, this, this is a very good cassette. I mean, you know, it, it is the classic Saihan. I mean, I think 1990, this is as early one of these as I've seen, and it has got nice rich brown tape in it. So, yeah, if I'd have got these instead of D's at the time, if they were available, or if I'd seen them, I wouldn't have been disappointed. Yeah, very nice. So, let us now move on to, oops, the ICM UF1. Now, supposedly this is a step up the range over the AF1 we've just had. It's got much sort of lighter brown tape, but it's an ICM, so it'll probably be filled with AGFA or BASF. But let's just uh, let the deck bias it up. And we'll record it at the same levels as the AF1 and see how that compares. And I'm probably just going to continue with the rest of Marigold because it was a nice, cheerful tune. And we can see directly, well, here directly, how one of the type ones compares to the other. And if this genuinely is better, maybe I'll uh, turn this up just a little bit. Let's have a see. Okay, that's biased up. Okay, let's continue with Marigold.
Okay, let's crank this up a bit. Who says you can't use a ferric without Dolby for gentle music? I mean, the hiss didn't seem excessive to me there. It was peaking at plus four, which is, like I said, plus seven on Dolby scale. Uh, I mean, the bass was certainly there. It wasn't distorted, no more so than the original recording anyway. The piano was nice and clear. Yeah, this is, well, it's, it's an ICM assembled tape so basically it's ICM hubs and shell with either BASF or, or AGFA tape in it but yeah no that was very nice I do love these hubs they look so nice going round I just wish it had the uh, the ICM turbo shell but never mind but yeah again a very decent cassette now let's go over to the ICM pure chrome UF2 if my camera can focus it with the pure chrome tape in it so let's get this one loaded up and let's get this calibrated so it's a uh, pure chrome so I'm going to turn this down a bit I'm not going to record this any hotter than zero because it's a pure chrome naturally but again if it's a BASF or Agfa, it's going to be decent and like I say this deck this Revox because it's European it loves a pure chrome Just seems strange to me a Japanese company like JVC releasing a pure chrome tape when I'd imagine like I say most Japanese decks were internally calibrated to ferrocobalt, but ho-hum right let's just turn the input down a bit on that one Okay, so this one is another track from the YouTube audio library called Nothing on me.
Yeah, so that was peaking a bit higher than I wanted. It was maybe hitting plus one, plus two, but it didn't seem to phase it. I mean, the track itself seemed to have a bit of distortion in the bass, but this is a lovely pure chrome. You know, it sounded really well, low hiss, captured all the highs, captured all the bass. Yeah, I mean, again, strange that a Japanese manufacturer is releasing pure chrome tapes, but yeah, this is very good again. I mean, it's a bit boring looking, but what do you want? It's ICM and they never do a bad job. So now let us go over to the metal. And like I say, I don't know who made this one. It could be genuine JVC. If not, if it's Japanese, it's going to either be Maxell, TDK or Sony. I can't imagine Sony selling JVC tape. Maxell TDK, but them hubs, them, them hubs to me say this could be a genuine JVC affair. So let's have a look, see, let's get it all calibrated up. Push this one a bit. I'm going to push this one maybe to about, let's just take the input level a bit up when it comes into maybe plus four, which is like plus seven Dolby scale which is plenty for a metal. Yeah, come on, I maybe need to have a look at that hub website and see if they've got an identifier. They could be genuine JVC, okay. Right, it is aligned. So let me just uh, turn that up a bit and let's have a see how this performs. And this track is called All Stars. Okay, so not an amazing track, but I chose that because there's loads of bass and loads of treble. And it got it. I mean, if I was being ultra critical, I mean, I'm listening through my Audio Technica headphones today, but it seemed like it was losing a little bit of top end. And like I say, that's a plus seven Dolby scale. Um, the shell is a little bit low rent for a metal, to be fair. I mean, it just looks like a, an entry level ferric sort of shell. But, nice deep black tape, no dropouts, not the best metal I've ever heard, but it all depends on price. If these were being sold cheaper than, say, an MA or an MX, then 
yeah it wouldn't be a bad buy but yeah not the most spectacular metal level but very decent all the same so I'd like to introduce Club Cassette Comeback why would you want to be a member of Club Cassette Comeback well New videos will be advert free and exclusive for Club Cassette Comeback members five days before the general YouTube viewing public. Cassettes used in the videos will be given away as prizes to Club Cassette Comeback members. A credit on the videos will be given to you when you first join the club. On the Cassette Comeback web store, new arrivals will be available to Club Cassette Comeback members first before being sold to the general public. And on the Cassette Comeback web store, special discounts will be given to Club Cassette Comeback members. So how do you join this club? Well, if you spent £150 in the last 12 months on the web store, you should have already got your email showing you how to join. As the time goes on, if you hit that threshold, you naturally will be automatically made a member. The other way is to subscribe to my new Patreon here. New Patreon subscribers also will get an email telling them how to get into Club Cassette Comeback. So if you think I'm worth the price of a coffee a month for the work I do, then please do join up. Otherwise, thanks for listening. The truth. So what are my thoughts on these JVC cassettes? Well, the first word that pops into my head is inconsistent. I mean, here's the empty cases, yeah? We have the Saihan, which is one type of case. Then we have two ICMs, which are a different kind of case. And then we've got the third one, which is a different kind of case as well. And then if you look at the printing, these have this part in black, but the ICMs have them in gray and the labels are all different, inconsistent. And if we look at the cassettes themselves, you know, if we look at say, this one which is the type one it's got the same sort of low rent look as a metal i mean this is the most low rent metal apart from maybe the late maxell metal cds which came in a ur shell but this is pretty unspecial looking this apart from the icn hubs is pretty unspecial looking too so i mean we've got the af1 which is a very competent very decent type one and if this was the same sort of price as a d or you are a hf it had a fair crack at it now let's see if we can pop these back in see if it is possible hey look at that hey the tony cruz method who knew these ones you know it's supposedly a step up from the af1 but this is no ad this is no HFS, you know, this is no UDI, it doesn't look it, it may well perform like it, but again, it, it just looks low rent compared to its competition. And like I say, because I never remember buying these in the day or even seeing them, I don't know if they were significantly cheaper, which would have made up for it. I really don't know. But again, that doesn't stop it being a competent performer. Come on, there we go, right, sort of there. The Pure Chrome, again, a lovely performer, but yeah, it's it's in a, a cheap looking shell. I'm not saying it's not a bad shell, but it's just in a cheap looking shell. And the metal, again, it, it, I do like, I did like the, the three holes. Can you see that, the three holes? And when they went round, it looked a bit like a mini reel. That, that's a nice touch. And like I say, if these are genuine JVC made metals, then fair enough. But it didn't sound as magical as like an MA or a Metal SR or an MX. But if the price was right, and it'd have to be, because again, this looks pretty low rent, this wouldn't be a bad buy. I mean, in this day and age, yeah, I'd have to say that, that all of these really are collector's pieces because these, like I say, are not cheap. I've never felt the need to buy any because they never turn up in enough bulk 
for it to be worthwhile for me and when I see them individually they are expensive these aren't cheap JVC is a name that has a great deal of heritage more to do with video than with audio but we have here you know the the sort of last gas of a company who are making something because they can and like I said there's no consistency three different manufacturers low rent looking but that doesn't take away from the fact that they do perform well enough they really do it's just at this moment in time I'd say these are more collector's pieces because you know you, you can get something that performs better for less you know this get yourself a, a, a late D you know what I mean it'll perform just as good this one like I say ADs will perform better and they look better this one's a pure chrome it's a nice one but how many BASF or SKC pure chromes can you get cheaper than one of these will cost and like I say a metal JVC this is a real rare expensive rarity but you know an MX or an MA performs better looks better and will cost you less but if you've got them enjoy them I enjoyed looking at them thank you very much again Peter for sending them much appreciated because they are interesting cassettes they do perform it's just they are really collector's pieces only now so thanks for watching it's good that everything's starting to get a bit towards normal again isn't it but that doesn't mean we should stop recording tapes back at home in the safety of our castles definitely so please like and subscribe until the next video stay safe happy taping bye bye